I want to share for a few minutes on encountering Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And I've been reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, pretty well do it every Easter, just read through the, the, the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. And so reflecting on Luke chapter 24, um, Jesus appears to three groups of people after he rises from the dead. The, the first were the women who went to the tomb to continue the embalming process of the dead body of Jesus. These women were absolutely shocked to find that the tomb was empty. They were not expecting Jesus to be alive. And they were met with the famous words of the, of the angel who said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. The second group in Luke 24 of just two men who were walking to the town of Emmaus, a little town outside Jerusalem. These two guys were just in grief. They were probably bawling their eyes out. They were confused. They were upset. They were followers of Jesus. They weren't part of the 12, but they were probably part of the 70 that were followers of Jesus. And they, they um, were grieving over his death on the cross, and they thought that was it. That's the end. It's finished. The story has ended. All their hopes, all their aspirations, all the words of Jesus, now finished. The Romans killed him as a part of the conspiracy of the Jewish religious leaders. And, and though Jesus turns up and he starts walking with them and he starts talking to them about their sorrow and you know what? They didn't even recognise him. They so were not expecting him to be alive that Jesus is walking with them and talking with them and eyeballing them and they don't even recognise it's him. And then um, after he leaves the famous understatement of the whole Bible, these two guys talk to each other and they go, weren't our hearts burning within us while he talked with us and opened the scriptures to us? So Jesus opened up the story from Genesis to Malachi, the whole Old Testament, showing them that the Christ who came to earth, the eternal son of God, must die for the sins of humanity, but he would rise again. So Jesus is doing the Bible study. I would have loved to have been there for that Bible study. And they didn't even recognise him. And then when he'd gone, they realised, wow, it's Jesus. So these two guys cut their journey short and rushed back to Jerusalem and found Jesus' disciples, the 11 disciples, and confirmed what the women had said to them in the morning, because they didn't believe the women. So when the women came to the, the 11, they said, oh, you're crazy. Women, exaggerators, embellishers, imagination. Come on, girls, get a grip. He's dead. Even the 11 did not believe, even though Jesus had told them that his purpose was yes, he came to reveal what God the Father was like, to, to reveal God in human form walking among us as we look into Jesus' eyes and we see the heart of God, how he acted and reacted to people. We love what we see. We have a picture of God that is fantastic. But his mission was to come and reveal what God was like, God the Father. He came to give fantastic teaching and to help a lot of people in that region, but his ultimate purpose was to die upon a cross on Good Friday. In fact, it was Bad Friday. It was a bad day for Jesus, but it was a good day for us. He went through terrible suffering, and out of that, somehow, God the Father put all the sins, all our personal mistakes and sins, sins of desire and, and thought and word and action, all the sins that have ever been committed, past, present and future, your sins, my sins, upon Jesus. And there God the Father rejected him, because he carried the sin of the world, because a perfect God cannot look upon sinful humanity. There's a great chasm between human beings and God. Jesus is the only one that could bridge that chasm. The cross became a bridge by which people could actually look upon him and see God's love fastening him to the cross. That's what, what kept him there. It wasn't the nails. It wasn't the ropes. It was the love that he had for us, because Jesus could have gone like this and sent 80,000 angels to wipe out the Roman Empire and finish it all. 
But he knew that would not be a victory. That would be a Pyrrhic victory. The victory had to be that he had to deal with the issue of alienation between humanity and God. And the only way was to cover the sins that we've all committed. And only he who shed his blood upon that cross on Good Friday could cover that sin. So they buried him and did not expect him to rise again, even though he told them this was the purpose of, of the Messiah in the whole Old Testament. They still didn't believe. The women kind of were shocked. And they came and told the 12, the 11, and, and they said, oh, come on, you're crazy. The two men on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is with them. They don't even recognize him. And they come back and say to the disciples, hey, it's true. We have seen Jesus. We have talked with him. He has ministered to us. And so these guys, as they come back to the 12, I love what happens straight away? What happens is Jesus turns up in that room when those two guys from Emmaus turn up and the 11 are talking and they're getting all excited. And I see three things that happen to all people who meet the resurrected Jesus Christ. Three things happen to all people. It happened to Louise, it happened to Lauren, it happened to Angela. They testified about that. It happened to Vanessa and Mervyn. They testified today. And these five folks are not liars. These folks are not crazy. They're eminently sensible, sane, normal human beings. Edu well educated, multi-degree, some of them, business people, true Aussies and South Africans. And they have said to us that they have met Jesus the resurrected Christ. They've come to know him. Either they're telling us a big fib or they're crazy. They're not deluded. It happened to me as a 17-year-old 45 years ago. I wasn't looking for him. But he found me and it took me six months to open my heart. I was tough and I wasn't looking for him. I was actually enjoying my life of sin, selfishness, living for myself. And so I just started reading Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and kept on turning up to a church like this. But for six months I'm struggling. And I'm reading Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels, all about Jesus. And at the end I was convinced that he was who he claimed to be, God in human form. That he had a purpose to die on a cross, that he rose again, that he was alive and he was knocking on my heart's door. But he wasn't going to bash the door down. I had to respond to him. And, uh, and you know what? It can happen to you like it happened to Lauren, Angela, Louise, and to Mervyn, and to Vanessa, and to me. If you allow the risen Jesus, who died on a cross in your place, to touch your life this Easter, through this service. When you encounter Jesus, three things happen. He will impart his supernatural peace to you. It says in verse 36 of Luke 24, while I was still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When Jesus visits you, he will speak his peaceful presence in your life. No matter who you are, you could be up in the balcony, you could be in the back rows, you could be in the front rows. And it will transform you. You will have peace with God. Alienation goes. You will receive a lasting inner peace within yourself where your insecurities and fears and inferiorities somehow evaporate because now you have peace in your heart because you have peace with God. You're at ease. You know you have the gift of eternal life. Melvin, what he went through, so many people go through a mental health crisis. More and more Aussies, are ha it's happening. And if statistics are right, probably one out of every five of us here either have or will go through some crisis like that. Jesus is the ultimate one who can still our nerves and, and neutralize our fears and calm our anxieties and take our cares and our worries because he loves us. And now we have purpose in life. We know we're going to live forever and ever with him. And as Laura shared, she was with her grandma as she went to be with Jesus. I've been with so many people who have gone to be with Jesus. And it's just a doorway. Those who have hope in Christ, man, it's a beautiful experience that you know that you know that you know where you're going 
And those who are left behind who also have faith in Jesus know they're going to meet their loved ones again. And so he will impart his supernatural peace. When he visits you, he will speak his peaceful presence into your life. It'll transform you. You will have peace with God. You'll have receive a lasting inner peace with yourself. And you'll be able to make peace in your relationships with others. He gives you the ability to be able to build bridges between people. Even as the cross became a bridge between you and God, his presence and peace helps you to get it together as far as it's possible with all people, even your enemies. Secondly, when you encounter Jesus, he will open your mind to be able to understand his word, his wonderful word. In verses 44 to 45, it says this to the, to the 11 disciples. And it's interesting what he says here. He could have said, guys, just believe because here I am. I am among you. I'm alive. Put your faith in this miracle. It's positive proof. But he knew that if he went away and went to heaven, maybe in a couple of years they'd think, man, did that really happen? Was that a hallucination? Did we dream it? Was that real? All of us hallucinated at the same time. The exact same thing. But he knew that their faith had to be built on something more solid. And he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the prophets all the way through to Daniel, and the Psalms, all the writings. Then he opened their minds, get this, so they could understand the scriptures. When Jesus visits you, he will reveal the Bible's treasures to you. It'll be a different book. It'll become a new book for you. It'll form the foundation for your faith. It'll become God's priceless and trustworthy word to you. It will explain all that you need to know about God and how to live for him in this world. As I'm reading those four Gospels as a young boy, as a 17-year-old, I'm reading it through and it's like, it's not a book. It's like there's a light coming onto it, but actually the light was on the inside. It was like I was gaining understanding. It was like I was seeing God. It was like I was talking to God. And I shook myself and I'm thinking, man, I'm not going to go to this church for a couple of months. So I said, oh, maybe it's just a head job. Maybe they're, they're getting to me. Maybe they're brainwashing me. So I'm a doubter. So I stopped going to church, but I couldn't put the book down. And as I'm reading it, it's like God is speaking to me. And I'm reading lots of different things. And he's speaking to me. And I remember on that Thursday night, before the Sunday, and when people from the church came to visit me, they said, Billy, you okay? We miss you. And I said, look, I'm okay. I just got to sort this thing out. Am I really going to become a believer in Jesus? Because I know if I'm going to be a, a believer and receive him, it's going to change my life. It's going to mess up with the way I'm living. And I like the way I'm living. I like my sin. I like my drugs. I like my alcohol. I like my girl chasing. I knew I had, I knew Jesus was saying there's something better for you, son. But he wouldn't bash the door of my life down. He gave me time, but he gave me, he opened my eyes to be able to see. You can't become a Christian unless you have this revelation. When Jesus appears to you, when you encounter Jesus, he will impart his peace, he will open your mind to be able to understand his word. Too many people I've seen fall away after being touched by Jesus because they don't centre their lives upon his book. All of our spiritual experiences with Jesus must be in line with God's pattern in the book. And so our faith, and so Jesus is here saying to them, guys, it's in the book, it's in the book, it's in the book. Centre your thoughts and you're believing on the book because I'm not going to be with you one day and you're going to question whether it's real because your experience has to do with your feelings, it's very real and very powerful. But sometimes we go through hell. Sometimes we have times of great suffering. Sometimes we go through the valley of the shadow of death and all our feelings have gone. But he's saying, I'm going to open your mind to see me in the book. The third thing, when you encounter Jesus, he will empower and commission you to share his good news. In verses 45 to 49, it says, and he told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Boys, it's, 
It's the day I've risen. And repentance, in other words, go and tell people to change their thinking patterns, to change their beliefs, that their beliefs are wrong. They've got to now change their thinking patterns to think God's way. That's what repentance means. And repentance for the forgiveness, because only that way can people receive forgiveness of their sins if they agree with God, with what God's done in sending me and in my death on the cross for you. So he says, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. When you experience Jesus and his personal saving grace, and forgiveness for all your sins, and and you know that you've received the gift of eternal life, you just naturally want to tell others about this fantastic news. Jesus said, this is going to be the hallmark. When you encounter me, the real real person who knows Jesus can't help but talk about him, because it's the greatest news in all the world. When you genuinely come to know Jesus through the doorway of repentance and faith, you just want to share your life-changing discovery. And I've been doing it for 45 years. Whether it's here on a Sunday or whether it's in a taxi going to the airport, whoever it is, if I get the opportunity, I just tell them, you know what? And I always respectfully and gently, and and if people ask me, I'm ready to share with them the greatest news in all the world. I know God. I know God. I know his name is Jesus. And he died on a cross for me and he rose again and he lives now in me through the Spirit. It's the best news in all the world. When I die, in fact, I'm looking forward to death. On one level, I'm going to miss my family and friends, but on another level, to be in his presence where there's no more sin, pain, suffering, death. And one day when he returns, he's going to wrap everything up and he's going to eliminate sin and Satan, sickness and death, and there'll be no more tears. And our world is so full of suffering and pain that now he's giving us the opportunity to turn to him willingly. But one day he will return to this earth. The gift of eternal life is so real. And when he commissions you as one of his witnesses, he empowers you with his Holy Spirit to be able to live the Christian life. Because you can't live the Christian life by law, just by the word. You've got to live by God's Spirit who comes to live within you. And he will equip you to be able to communicate his message about this new life. Folks, on this Easter Sunday morning, whoever you are, you can encounter the risen Jesus Christ right now as we pray together. He's just a prayer away. He's right with you. He may be knocking on your heart's door and maybe he has been for quite a while and this is a divine appointment for you to be here this morning as I become a spiritual midwife and help you to open the door of your life and place your trust in him. Turn from yourself. Turn from your old ideas. That's what repentance means. Turn from your old way of thinking. Think the new way, God's way. Believe the good news and put your trust in him. Turn and trust. That's what faith is. Trusting in a living saviour who will actually forgive your sins, give you the gift of eternal life, transform your life, And you can experience what these beautiful people who got baptised and these guys on the screen, what they shared. I know them all. And they're the real deal. And they've shared with us the truth about Jesus Christ. Because he rose from the dead that Easter 2,000 years ago and is alive today, he will do for you what he did for his disciples back then. And it requires, as I said, that we turn and trust.